Hey everybody, welcome to our tutorial on basic timeline editing. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the basics of the timeline, how it's used to uh, do animation and modifications to your scene. And then we'll start a project and we'll get into uh, some more advanced stuff later. So this tutorial will actually continue on to a more advanced uh, timeline tutorial. Uh, so first of all, if we want to be uh, using our timeline, we have to have objects in our scene. So I'm going to go to the uh, scene tab here and I'm going to go down to uh, my scene folder. And I'm just going to uh, drag down here and I'm going to add in this uh, street scene right here. So I'll just double click that and that will add into my scene. And you can see I have a whole ton of objects in my scene and these objects can be edited in the timeline. Now if I want to bring up my timeline, the first thing I need to do is go down here. I can also press the F3 hotkey which is also a lot shorter. Let's go ahead and uh, add that in. And you can see my timeline pops up right here. Now in the timeline, if I want to select objects in my scene, I can select them from the track list right here. If I go to uh, props, I can select, you know, the road, the sky. Let's select this traffic light here. You can see it's uh, uh, surrounded by a red selection box when I select that. And I can select any of the items here. And those tracks will appear in my timeline. So there's a traffic light and the store C. Now we also have the project track, which includes our camera, sound effects, and music. And the traffic lights and the store sign, or the store, these are actual props. These have different uh, different tracks available. Motion, Opacity, Link, uh, Transform. We'll talk about all of these later. If I want to close down these tracks, I can simply click the X button beside them and they can uh, I can take those out of my scene. In addition to that, if I want to go here, I can select Object Related Tracks. So if I select that, you can see the object I currently have selected is Store C and that will appear. Let's select my traffic light and you can see that my traffic light will now appear in my timeline. And in any object I select, that object will be shown in my timeline. Uh, if I turn object related track off and I select something, it will not be shown up in the timeline. So in addition to moving the timeline around like this, I can uh, simply double click the timeline and that will be docked down here at the bottom. Uh, I can see all of my tracks. If I add a couple more tracks in here, let's go to prop, maybe uh, road B. Um, let's click a, a couple more things. We can just uh, scroll up and scroll down here. And maybe if I put on object related track, I can select, uh, you know, different objects in my timeline. If I turn that off and I just uh, open up the track list, let's go ahead and add in a couple more things. And we can just scroll down here a little bit further. Maybe add a sky, skyline. We'll add all of these things into my timeline. And you can see those are appearing down here in my timeline. And I can open up their uh, sub tracks like this, uh, the transform tracks. And then if I have too many tracks, I can use the scrolling. I can scroll on my timeline down here. Um, but personally, I like to keep my timeline uh, floating. So I'm just going to double click the uh, bar again there. I'm going to close down all of these tracks since I don't need them. And I like to have my timeline just floating around because it's easier to access. So let's go ahead and add in our first object to demonstrate simple keyframe animation. So I'm going to go down to my scene tab again. And we're going to go to scenes, or sorry, rather props. Let's go to props here. Let's go down here to uh, Scenes and Props uh, Metro Life. This is one of our content packs. And I'm going to go in my street scene since we are on the street. And go down here. And there should be a taxi here somewhere. There we go. So I'm just going to click and drag this taxi onto my scene. And you can see there it is right there. We'll just uh, zoom in a little bit. And this taxi has no tires. So we need to actually add the tires as well. Let's go ahead and uh, click and drag those tires. And place them right in front of the taxi. Now you can see that the taxi and the tires are separate. And I'm going to show you in just a moment how you can actually link these two things together. Uh, but first of all, I want to position them properly. So let's go ahead and zoom in on my uh, tires. I press the F key that will focus on them in my uh, screen there. Um, and what I want to do is move them into position to about here. You can see that looks about good. This is a fairly low riding taxi. And I just want to use this gizmo here to move them a little bit further back on the Z axis there. And so they just go behind the taxi layer right there. And now what I want to do, you can see that um, we're going to perform some quick uh, keyframe animation first. What I want to do is bring this taxi way over to the uh, right side of my scene here. So I'm going to control and click the taxi as well as the taxi tires. That'll select both of those. And if I select object related track right now, you can see taxi and tires are both selected. And let's move those over to right here. Since we're at frame one, it's not going to do any animation yet. But let's go ahead and I want to scale these a little bit larger as well. Make that taxi a little bit bigger so we can see it. There we go. And what I want to do is I'm going to select only my taxi for now. Okay, and what I want to do is go into my transform track. 
Now the transform track, uh, the keyframes in the transform track indicate change in position in your scene. So if I want, I can just uh, go through my frames this way. Um, I can zoom in and out of my timeline by clicking and dragging this uh, this bar, this uh, time scrub up here. You can see how that's zooming in and out. That's normally how I like to zoom in and out. You can also use these zoom out keys, uh, zoom in keys, and you can use the actual size and that will go back to where uh, each little section here is uh, one frame. Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, zoom out a little bit. And what I want to do is transform my track taxi's position. So let's go ahead and uh, zoom out. And I'm going to uh, click out of the scene here and actually hold shift and scroll my mouse button to uh, move out a little bit faster. Let's try and get our whole scene in here. And what I want to do is let's go about to uh, maybe go over to frame. Let's zoom out a little bit more. Well, maybe you go to frame uh, 175 or so. Let's select my taxi and let's move that taxi all the way across the scene. Um, you can see behind the taxi, there is a nice green line. And that indicates the path of my taxi that my taxi is going. And the tires, unfortunately, are being left behind. So let's go back to uh, frame one here and press play. And you can see my taxi just kind of zooming down the street at a good uh, leisurely pace. But the tires are being left behind. So how can we fix that? Let's select the tires first. And what I want to do, since we have object related tracks selected right now, the taxi tires are in here. I'm going to open up this link track. And if you guessed correctly, you could probably guess that we're going to link these tires to the actual taxi body. And so what I want to do for that is I want to go up to this tool right here and select link. And after that, I want to just select my taxi's body right there. And you can see in the link track, this keyframe appears and this line indicating how long the link lasts will be after that. So let's go ahead and see now. Now you can see those tires are following along with the taxi. What if I went to frame 75 though and then I decided to unlink this? Let's select unlink and you can see that that cuts off right there. The, uh, there's no longer a line behind it and another keyframe is present. So let's go ahead and play back now. You can see up until frame 75 and then the tires will be left behind, which is really not what we want. So let's press Control Z, and I'm going to undo that. So now we just have our taxi going from one point to the next, and that's how um, you do simple transform animation. We'll open up our transform track one more time. Let's close down the link track. And now what if I wanted that taxi to go a little bit faster? But oh, we need to select our taxi first. And there we go. Open the transform track, and there's our keyframe. So you can see that keyframe is at 175. What if I wanted the taxi to get to that position faster? Now the easiest way to do that is simply to click this uh, keyframe right here and click and drag it to maybe 100. And let's see how fast the taxi will go now. You can see the taxi is going quite a bit faster because I moved the keyframe ahead and that essentially makes it so that the taxi is going from this one point to the other point in less frames, which makes it faster. So let's go maybe to 50 and see how fast it goes going way too fast for a city. Slow down, guy. And so we'll go down, uh, we'll bring this up to maybe like 225 and see how slow he goes now. So that's some basic, basic keyframe animation. That's the easiest way to get one object from one point to another. Just move around this little keyframe and you should be good to go. So I think we'll leave it at 175. That seemed like a nice, decent city speed. And that's your basic keyframe animation. That's how easy it is to get an object from one place to another. In addition to that, if I go to like maybe frame 100 right here and I decide to scale up my taxi, you can see that everything that's linked to it will also scale up. You, will, you can see that will also add a keyframe in the transform track. The transform track also indicates scale values as well. So let's take a look at what will happen here because these two keyframes right here, the first one and the last one, have the same scale values. You can see if I go there, that's the, uh, the same size uh, for this um, taxi. But here the taxi is huge. So let's see what will happen. You can see the taxi gradually getting bigger, transforming, and then gradually getting smaller. That's just to show you another option for the transform track. It also indicates change in size and rotation as well. So we'll just uh, go ahead and delete that keyframe right there. And the taxi will go back to its original size. Now an easy way to get from one keyframe to another, if you select your keyframe right here, you can also go to next keyframe, or you can use your tab key and go back to the previous keyframe, shift tab. And you can also add keyframes as well, which we'll talk more about later. So now that I've showed you simple keyframe animation with props, let's move on to characters, which are a little bit more difficult. 
Let's go to the actor tab. Let's bring a character in. Let's go ahead and select uh, maybe this uh, Sandra character. We're going to bring her right in front of this uh, store right over here. And you can see she's far off in the distance. So let's press the F hot key to focus on her. And there we have Sandra just standing there. Now I'm going to show you the difference first between 2D and 3D animations. So we have Sandra in position there at frame 1. And if I go to the animation tab in my motion folder, I have the option of 2D and 3D. Let's apply a 2D animation first. And we'll select this move folder. And I'm going to move down. We're going to find a female walk, this female officer walk right here at 0 degrees facing forward. So let's go ahead and just double click that. And you can see that motion will apply to our character. So she takes two steps. Now let's press F3, go into my timeline. And because I still have object orient or object related track selected, Sandra's track now comes up. So you can see characters have a few more uh, tracks available uh, rather uh, as opposed to props. Now, when I added this 2D motion, uh, where do you think it added onto? Uh, which track do you think it added onto? Probably this 3D motion track or the 2D motion track. Now, let's click on the 3D motion track first. And you can see the motion clip right there. Uh, make note right now that this motion clip is currently gray, which indicates it is a 2D motion and not a 3D motion. And you can always see the uh, degree profile in the title right here, Female Officer Zero, Zero Degree Profile. And if I open the 2D motion track, this just basically has a few more uh, tracks that are available for editing of your motion clip. Now we have layer here, which indicates changes in the character's layer structure. The body transform is basically changes in the character's position of like the hands. You can move the hands, um, anything like that. The sprite, the body sprite just indicates sprite changes and the body deform indicates changes in the shape and everything of the body. Uh, for more information on this uh, type of editing, I suggest checking out our intro to character animation tutorial since we won't have too much time to go into detail in this timeline tutorial. But for all of these different tracks, Check out our intro to character animation tutorial and that will explain them in a lot more detail than we can in this tutorial right here. Now, if you have your character uh, with a motion clip applied to it, uh, let's just go ahead and close down these ones right here. We can just close down the whole 2D motion track. And if we have a clip applied to our character like this one here, there's two ways that we can remove that clip. The first way is you can right click on the clip itself and you can press delete. And that'll pop our character back into her original uh, idle pose. Let's press Control Z and undo that. Let's take a look at another way we can do that as well. If I right click on my character and I select Remove Animation, my character will actually maintain that position uh, that she had at the beginning of her walking animation uh, right here. Um, so we don't want that. Let's press Control Z, undo that. And then we'll just go ahead and right click on the clip and, whoops, sorry, and go ahead and delete it. There we go. And so now what I want to do is I want to add a 3D motion uh, clip. And you can see the difference here in just a moment. So I'm going to go to my 3D motion folder, move, and let's go back to our female officer walk. There it is right here. Now before I apply this, I want to actually show you the uh, tool right here, which is 3D motion angle align. Now if I select that off, let's go ahead and turn that off right now. I'm going to select my character. And I'm going to use the bracket key to change her to 270 degrees. And what I want to do is at frame one, let's go ahead and select this female walk right here, this female officer walk. Now you can see she pops back into a zero degree profile. Even though I originally had her at 270 degrees, it overwrote that and popped her into this zero degree profile, um, which is maybe not what we want, maybe what we do want. In this case, let's go ahead and press Control Z and undo that. And now she popped back into her 45 degree profile here. And let's go ahead and turn this option on now. We'll turn on the 3D motion align tool. And let's go ahead and try and uh, apply that motion again. Now you can see she maintains that angle. So the default position or the default angle profile for 3D motions is zero degrees, which is facing forward. However, if you have this option selected, any previous clips, your angle, your uh, motion will be applied to that particular angle. So just keep that in mind. Uh, so now we have our walk at 45 degrees. Now what I want to do is show you how to modify this motion clip. Now uh, I mentioned before that the 2D motion clip is gray. The 3D motion clip is blue. Uh, so when the clip is blue, that means you can change the angle profile to any one of these and the character will walk at that angle, which is a really cool feature. Let's move back to frame one and just uh, click our character, use the bracket keys to 
bring her back to the 45 degrees. Now see, for example, I wanted to make this walk go faster or slower, or I wanted to cut the walk off uh, in the middle. Uh, I'll show you how to do that right now. Now there's two options here. There is a loop option and a speed option. These are both for modifying your motion clip. So let's use the speed option first. And let's click and drag on this uh, motion clip here. And let's click and drag that way out to about 100 and something right there. Now if I play back, take a look at the speed. It's almost like my character is moving in slow motion. So she's going really slow. Now if I click and drag this clip and move it up to maybe, uh, you know, uh, 20, 20 uh, frames right there, you can see now she does a really quick uh, one, two walk like that. So let's press uh, Control Z. Uh, I'll have to press Control Z twice actually to undo twice and back to her original um, speed right here. So basically this speed option is for obviously shortening or uh, lengthening your clip which in turn will speed up or slow up the animation that's held within. Uh, so let's go ahead and select uh, looping now. So I want to loop this. If I click and drag you can see that I can loop all kinds of copies of the original motion. So let's go ahead and play this back now. So you can see now that my motion is just continually looping I can loop it as many times as I want basically. Um, just play back and Blah, blah blah. Now you notice at the beginning of every uh, clip right here that I've copied, there's one keyframe right here and one keyframe down here. Now this keyframe indicates the 3D angle. So let's go ahead and I'll give you an example here. If I go back to frame uh, 19 or 20 or so and I select my character and I use the bracket key to transform her to zero degrees, you can see that all of this, uh, all of these keyframes will be copied onto the other clips because the motion data is copied. Uh, after I've looped it. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at what will happen here. Let's play back. You can see my character will go back into 0 degrees and 45 degrees, 0 degrees, 45 degrees. That doesn't really look uh, very good. So let's control Z and undo that. And now you can see that we have our uh, clip there again. Now what if I went to this frame right here and I clicked on my 3D motion layer. Now there's two ways to access the 3D motion layer tool. The, like, the way I like to do it when I'm in the timeline is just double click on that track. And when I double click on that track, what that'll do is that'll automatically open up my 3D Motion Key Editor. You can also find it down here, the tool right here. Uh, but what if, for example, down here, I decided to uh, take this character's arm and move it up, something like that. You can see that that kind of translates uh, the same thing uh, into each of these different uh, clips. So let's take a look. So it's not really what we want. She kind of pops back into place. We don't want anything like that. And just control Z that and undo that. Um, if we wanted to make modifications, we would want to do something first, which is flatten this clip. Let's actually close down our 3D motion key editor right now. We don't need that for now. And let's go ahead and go back to our clip right here. I want to right click on this clip and I want to select flatten motion clip. What that'll do is that'll flatten this into one single clip. And if I play back, you can see now that it's a, a seamless walk. Now at about frame 200, let's go and zoom out a little bit since I want her to kind of walk down the street here. Now the easiest way to do this is very similar to the way we did it with the taxi. Let's go ahead and at frame 200, I guess we're at 201, you can see the current frame up here. Let's click and drag my character down the street. And let's try and see her walking down the street. Now you can see she may be sliding a little bit um, the walking is not exactly the way we want it. So what I want to do is open this transform track for Sandra and you can see the transform key that I created right there. Now what I want to do is if she's sliding too much that means there's not enough steps uh, for her from point A to point B. So what I need to do is change the transform position to about here. Let's take a look at what happens now. Now you can see there's not as much sliding of the feet. And she's kind of moving along at a re uh, relatively normal looking pace. And there we go. And that's basically the way we want it. Now, if I want her to start walking at a 90 degree uh, angle right now, let's go ahead and see how we can do that. Let's go ahead and we have uh, looping selected. So I'm just gonna go ahead and loop uh, my character's motion. So you can see now that'll add another clip and she continues to walk right here. Now let's go ahead and flatten this again. So right click and wanna flatten it and that'll remove all of this data right here. We still have the transform position right here, but when she reaches that transform position, maybe we can move this a little bit back. Uh, when she reaches that position, what I wanted to do here is actually change her angle. So we'll select the character 
and use the right bracket key and now she will change to a 90 degree profile. And then we'll move a little bit further along the timeline. You can zoom in and out by uh, clicking and dragging this uh, little uh, bar right here on the top. Uh, in addition to that, if you want, you can uh, you know uh, zoom in this way, uh, zoom out, and you can actually do the actual size. And that'll have one frame for each little section here. Uh, but let's go ahead and just maybe zoom out a little bit. And uh, I like to do it on the, on the uh, top of the timeline here, the slider bar. And maybe from here, we want her to kind of walk a few steps in this direction, maybe at 350. She can walk to right over here. And let's go ahead and take a look and see what that looks like. There you go. So that's a nice uh, kind of turn right there. She's just walking along. And it's a good pace. So I think we're okay. Maybe at this point, this transform, let's try and make her uh, a little bit larger as well. We can maybe just uh, bring her a little bit up on the z-axis right here. And we can do the same thing on uh, this transform key right here. And bring her a little bit up. Now, like I, like I said before, you can actually uh, go between transform keys by using these uh, little doodads right here, or the uh, tab and shift tab. And so that's kind of how that works. I think this one should be okay. We scaled them relatively normally. All right, so there's our character walking along. Now, there's one final thing I want to show you in this uh, uh, basic timeline editing uh, tutorial right here. Let's make sure that Sandra is selected and press the, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, find her. Uh, press the F key to focus in on her. We're going to do some facial animation since I want to show you the uh, facial tracks right here. So let's go ahead and close down the transform track since we're not going to be using that anymore. We can just click there and click the 3D motion track. Let's go ahead and open up the face track. Now the face track has a voice clip track, uh, a, a facial clip track right here, as well as separate facial motion tracks uh, where you can click this and you can select individual facial items. Let's go ahead and see what this does. Let's zoom in on our character first. Uh, we're going to add a voice clip first. Let's close down the facial clip and the face motion. And let's focus on our character's face. And let's add a vocal clip first. So let's click, select our character. Go over here to create script. And once I select that, I'm just going to add a wave file in this case. And we're going to go to uh, Emma right here. And we can go down to one of Emma's um, talking motion or talking clips right here. Select Emma talk. And go ahead and open that. The weather is so nice, bright, and shiny. Oh, you'd have loved it. Okay, so our character kind of walks off the screen. She's just ignoring us, but we do have the data that I need. We have this voice uh, waveform right here, which indicates the uh, waveform of the audio clip that I added in. And below that, we have the lips. And this lips includes a number of different uh, keyframes for the lip syncing. If you pay uh, close attention to the character's lips, you can see that they're moving according to each uh, keyframe right here. So the different uh, kind of positions, uh, this one's the SZ. Now if I want to open up the ellipse editors, I can actually go up to here and select the ellipse editor uh, tool right there, or I can just double click on any of the keyframes and it pops up right here. If I wanted to change any of those, I can switch those with uh, a different uh, phonem shape, which is the shape that our mouths make to form a certain sound. Now we're not going to get too much into that. Like I mentioned, we want to focus on the timeline. I just wanted to show you where these different uh, where these different uh, forms of data are in the timeline. If you want to learn more about this, you can check out our uh, facial puppeteering and uh, voice lip syncing uh, tutorials. So if I select this uh, vo voice clip right here, I can click that, uh, right click the clip and just go ahead and delete it if we don't want her to talk anymore. And she'll just kind of walk down the street with no expression, just like that. So let's go ahead now. And let's go open up the face track again, and we'll go to our facial clip track this time. Now the facial clip track, what I want to do is go into the puppeteering panel right here. And we'll go into the uh, puppeteering, and you can see it comes up with body puppeteering. But I can select this button right here to uh, toggle to uh, facial animation. Now let's take a look at these different facial profiles. Again, I'm just going to select one of these and preview. Uh, if you want to learn more about this, check out our facial uh, puppeteering uh, tutorial. So we'll select uh, this profile right here, maybe a happy one. Let's go ahead and preview right here and press space. You can see that our characters, the sprites are changing. I can make her uh, eyes blink like that. That's uh, you know, all kinds of different uh, facial expressions. So maybe that's a good one. It looks like she's kind of just uh, smiling, walking down the street. And let's go ahead and press record. All 
All right, so there's our character walking down the street. And you can see all of a sudden, all of these keyframes appear. We have a data clip right here. All of these keyframes appear in the head, face, and eye track. This is where the facial clip data is stored. So if I wanted to you know, change any of these, I can delete any of these keyframes with the face, the head, or the eye. And we'll have more detailed uh, tutorials on facial animation, but I just wanted to show you this is where your uh, facial puppet data will be stored. Let's go ahead and press Control Z. We'll undo that right there, and then we'll go ahead and uh, just play back, and you can see all of that is gone right there. Now with the facial motion track, you can see we have different tracks for facial transform and facial sprite. Let's go ahead and select uh, facial transform and facial sprite tracks, and then we'll select the right and left eyes. So now you can see we have right eye T and right eye S. Right eye T stands for right eye transform, right eye S stands for right eye sprite. So let's go ahead and zoom in on my character on her face here, and let's see how do we uh, modify, how do we get some keyframes in these tracks right here. So the facial transform track, let's go up to about frame 15 here, or frame uh, 20 rather, and you can see my character right there. If we have my character selected, let's close down the puppet editor right now, and let's go ahead into the sprite editor. So with the sprite editor, I can select my character's face. I can select any item on the face right here, and you can see I have the right eye selected. If I decide to change the sprite on my right eye, I select exert close down here, and you can see a keyframe appears in the face sprite track, which is the overall sprite track uh, for all of the facial items, as well as the right eye sprite track. And you can see she's kind of winking right there. Now, let's say for example, at this point um, right here, you can see she's winking, and then I can go right here and bring it back to normal. And so she kind of has a long wink right there, and then back to normal. Now, maybe at this point right here, I want to also change the size of her left eye. Let's make it a little bit smaller, like it's almost squinting. Now, you can do that with a sprite editor. You can select a different sprite right here. But let's go ahead and close this down. And what I want to do is select my eye right here, and or sorry, select the character right here. And then I want to go into this uh, 2D motion key editor right here. And from there on, I go to the face. And you can see right now it currently has a selection box around my lips. What if I selected my eye right here, and we kind of just shrunk that eye down a little bit. Uh, whoops, we don't have the eye select. That's the ear, sorry. You can see it's uh, the uh, yellow selected ear right there. Let's select the eye right there, and let's kind of just squint that down, maybe make it a little bit smaller. And you can see that now we have a uh, transform key that appears in the left eye transform track. And we can go over to here. And if I want, I can actually just click this button here to refresh that to the original size. And you can see that now that uh, transform key will be there as well. So that's the difference between the sprite and transform keys. So now we have our quick little wink like that. There you go. From this point, you can just see her eyes getting a little bit smaller and then bigger. And maybe if, if we wanted that, because uh, you can see gradually her eyes getting smaller from here to here. If we didn't want th that to get smaller until that uh, point right here, we can click on this keyframe. We can copy this keyframe. And I can just click over here and paste this keyframe right here. So now you can see that the eye automatically gets a little bit bigger. But from here to here, that's when it starts getting smaller. So you can see that box get a little bit smaller. And then it stays that way from here to here, it's at full size again. Now if I want it to stay smaller for the longer period of time, I can right click that one right here, copy, and then go over to here and paste. Now you can see that this eye will stay smaller for the longer time and then gradually get bigger right there. So let's play that back. And that's a nice, nicer looking wink right there. And that's how you can, you can kind of combine sprite editing and uh, transform editing, which like I mentioned before, is scale, size, and rotation, and all that stuff together. So that's your basic introduction to uh, timeline editing. Uh, in our next tutorial, we're going to do more advanced stuff. I'm going to show you how to do a few more things like uh, time warp, uh, transition curves, uh, and all kinds of other fun stuff as well uh, to create a final project. So thanks for watching, and stick around for the advanced tutorial.